Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Xiaoyang Wang. I'm from the University of Bristol, and today I'm demonstrating IA1, uh, Deep Reinforcement Learning for Future Open RAM, which is part of the uh, prog uh, prognostic for service assurance topic. Um, so this demo uh, contains two parts. The first part is about a resource as a resource assignment use case we did uh, in the concept of open run and the second part will be about uh, node association so um, for the first part uh, we model the resource assignment um, problem in open run as a bin packing problem and we're, we provide a solution using deep reinforcement learning so here on the left we can see a um, diagram of the open run structure here we have CU centralized unit and we have distributed unit and for, distri uh, for each distributed unit it will have connection for multiple uh, remote units so uh, this will be a centralized processing at the DU. So uh, in this part of the work we provide a general solution for resource management in this kind of centralized manner and um, the advantage of doing this is we will have higher resource utilization. For example, in our experiment, we reached uh, from 5% to 12% of the gain of the resource utilization. And we will have a higher efficiency uh, in processing IU requirements in this centralized way. Uh, so by, by having this, we will save some cost of the DUs. Um, because we are saving cost of DUs, potentially we can deploy more services on DUs rather than just process the IU requirements. Um, so for the bin packing problem formulation, uh, we have here uh, the bin, which is the uh, DU, uh, and the horizontal axis is the processing time, and the vertical axis is the actual physical resource. And for each item, uh, each item represents uh, one IU requirement. Again, the horizontal access is the required processing time, and the vertical um, access is the physical resource requested by the RU. Um, for the mathematical formulation, uh, we model this as a 2D bin packing problem like this. Um, so again, here we have centralized uh, processing in the DUs, uh, and we um, the goal is to manage DU resources given all the IU requirements. So basically, we need to find the packing strategy given all the items. Uh, we hope to improve the network utilization by minimizing the resource uses, usage in DUs. So more intuitively, what we are trying to do here is given the processing time requirement, we want to use um, the minimal resources at DUs. So we're trying to find the minimal height of the bin, uh, the minimal height of the um, bin to pack all our items into that. Um, to solve it using reinforcement learning, uh, we first model the problem as a Markov decision process. Um, for a Markov decision process, it will have, um, the first part will be the state representation, and the second part will be action, and we will have a reward. So for the state representation, because our bin packing problem is 2D, so we will have uh, one 2D uh, matrix modeling the bin, and we have uh, multiple matrix modeling the items. So this will be a 3D representation. Um, for the action, the action will be um, the position to place each item inside this bin. So um, the action is the actual position to put, uh, so to put the items. And we have the reward. The reward will be an indicator of uh, the performance of the final bin packing solution. Um, here we in introduce the uh, neural MCTS, which is the algorithm running behind our bin packing problem. So um, neural MCTS is used in AlphaGo Zero. Um, so it's a combination of deep neural networks with Monte Carlo tree search. Um, and because in the AlphaGo Zero, it's a two-player adversarial game. So here um, we, we, used, uh, we used the benefit of the self-play adversarial approach, but uh, we only have one agent. So we introduced another mechanism called ranked reward. And for more details, details please refer to um, our paper. So here the neural network will have uh, two hats. Uh, one hat is for the policy and another is for the value. 
Um, basically, the NeurAM CTS is a Monte Carlo tree search guided by the neural network. So uh, when we meet uh, the new leaf, uh, when we meet new leaf nodes, we don't do Monte Carlo rollouts. Instead, we run a neural network to give the uh, estimation of its value and the policy. Um, uh, again, um, this is uh, firstly introduced to do uh, self-play games, uh, but learning from self-play means uh, we don't need training data. Instead, the data is generated by us running this game uh, again and again. So the data is generated by self-play, so we don't need to pre-collect uh, data. Here I will show uh, the, training pro uh, the training process of this agent. Um, okay, so uh, in reinforcement learning, uh, the goal of our training is to maximize the accumulative reward. Here, uh, this is the uh, accumulative reward for each uh, episode in our reinforcement learning game. So we can see um, the reward is uh, increasing and it will stabilize uh, for uh, it will stabilize after around 120 training episodes. Um, aside from reward, we introduce another uh, we introduce another metrics called optimal uh, optimality ratio. It's just another um, indicator for the training of this agent. Again, we can see that uh, in this indicator increases and it stabilizes after for, uh, after around 120 training episodes, uh, which means we can say that our agent has converged to the optimal solution. Um, then uh, I will show some bin packing without uh, first using synthetic data. So because this is a um, bin packing problem, so here we show the result of our self-play agent playing this bin packing game, and uh, in comparison, uh, in comparison, we show the results from another method called heuristic virtual resource allocation algorithm proposed in another paper. So we can see that um, the packing results uh, we got using self-play deep reinforcement learning, uh, there is no gap, which means we have reached the optimal solution. But uh, for the result of another uh, heuristic method, we can see there are small gaps uh, here and there, so which means um, which means in terms of resource utilization, uh, the ut utilization rate here is not as high as the solution we get from self-play deep reinforcement learning. Again, we show another uh, set of results uh, using the heuristic method and our self-play deep reinforcement learning. Um, please note that um, the height of uh, the height of the final solution uh, shown in the second experiment and the first experiment, they are different, which means our deep reinforcement learning agent can deal with dynamic uh, requirements from our use. So we can see here the requirements uh, are different from what we have here. But uh, the behind this, it's the same agent running uh, in this scenario. So we only need to train it once and our agent can adapt to dynamic requirements. This is one of the benefit of using deep reinforcement learning. OK, so, so um, then I will show some uh, readouts on a um, on some real data we got from the node in Bristol. Um, here is a visualization of the um, of the data we have. Uh, here we have the uh, 4G sites around Bristol, and we have a potential locations for DUs, which is the edge computing centers. So the goal here is to pack the DU, uh, pack the IO requirements into uh, given DUs, considering, for example, the DU capacity, uh, the requirement, uh, the processing time, uh, and uh, we want to find the minimal height, uh, minimal height of the bin. Um, so I selected uh, two DUs in this experiment. Uh, first, uh, this D, uh, here is the DU and then we have 10 IUs connected to it. Again, here it's a different DU in a different location, and still we have 10 IUs connected to it. Um, so in our experiment, we compared with uh, three other different, uh, three other methods, 
and in terms of reward and resource utilization, the self-play deep reinforcement learning agent has the um, uh, has the best performance. For example, in terms of resource utilization, we have um, an increment of larger than five percent. Here I will show some examples uh, regarding to D1 and DU2. Uh, this is uh, a readout. Uh, uh, about DU1 and, and the top 10 IUs connected to it. Here I show the comparison of the readout uh, of our approach and the heuristic method. We can see that uh, the height of the final beam we found using the self-play deep reinforcement learning agent is smaller than, uh, than the height of the beam in another solution which means we have a more uh, compact solution, yeah, which will lead to a higher ut uh, resource utilization in the DU. Um, here is another set of uh, DU requirements. This is to show that uh, our deep reinforcement learning agent can deal with dynamic requirement, not just one single set of requirements. Again, the self-play deep reinforcement learning has uh, found a better solution. We can uh, show the same results for DU2. And the DU2 can, uh, for DU2, the agent can also deal with dynamic requirements. And I want to say that again, uh, the, all the uh, deep reinforcement learning agent we have in all these experiments, they are the same agent, which means it, it has only been tra trained once and can, it can be deployed in different DUs uh, dealing with different IO requirements. So the benefit of using deep reinforcement learning is we train it once and they can deal with dynamic environments very efficiently. Okay, so this is uh, the first part of the demo. Now we can uh, move to uh, the second part, which is the node association using a graph based approach. So uh, in the first part of the demo, we assume that the connection or the association status between DU and IUs are already known. But here we um, look at a more fundamental problem, which is the intelligent association between DUs and IUs. So here the aim is to find the best association between these nodes, minimizing the cost. For example, the cost can include uh, latency, power consumption, uh, some deployment cost, etc. Um, at the same time, the DUs will need to be able to process all IU requirements uh, without exceeding the capacity. Um, so this kind of topology can, can be naturally modeled as a graph. So here we show a graph. Uh, there are two types of nodes. Uh, for example, this is DU and these uh, green, green nodes are, are, are used. And for each node, it will have a it will have some attributes describing this node. For example, the attribute uh, include uh, the, the, the attributes include the type of this node. Is it a DU or an RU? Um, the requirement of this node, um, the associated cost of this node. Uh, things like that. So this topology can be modeled as a graph with uh, node attributes. Um, so we propose to use something we call graph Q learning um, because we want to find the optimal association between nodes. Uh, we model it as a sequential decision making process. We use MDP. Um, this will help us to build the reinforcement learning problem. Um, and in this MDP, uh, each association, we consider it as one state in the MT MDP. And here the state are graphs. So we introduce the graph convolutional, neural, uh, the graph convolutional network to deal with uh, this problem. Um, the graph convolutional network is one of the state of the art methods in dealing with uh, graphs. So what it does is uh, extracting information from the graph so it will help us to make better decision in the future. Um, and here what we did is we replaced the neural network in the normal reinforcement learning with our graph convolutional network. So we propose to use the graph Q learning for solving this uh, combinatorial problem. So um, basically we use uh, graph to represent each state in the MDP 
And for the solution, we use uh, deep reinforcement learning. But, uh, but in our deep reinforcement learning, we don't use the normal neural network or convolutional neural network. We use graph convolutional network. And this will help us to find the best association between these nodes. Um, we did a experiment as a proof of concept. Uh, we, this is experiment is done using the content uh, delivery network data. Um, please know that this is not RAN data. This is content delivery network. But the idea uh, we, want, we want to present here is we have a general graph based solution for solving these node association problems uh, in which we consider the node attributes. We consider multiple constraints and the multiple optimization goals simultaneously. So um, uh, the details of this uh, content delivery network data is, for example, we choose the Bristol area and we will have a uh, three, uh, three types of types of nodes. For example, we have tier three node, uh, which is the core node, and we have tier two node, and we have tier one node. Here, the tier three node is um, most is the most close is most close to the center of the network, while the tier one node is close to the edge of the network. So, um, the problem we consider is the com uh, the computational resource um, deployment and management. So, the computational resource will be ideally be be deployed on tier three and tier two nodes, not on tier one node because it's too close to the edge and the condition is um, not as good as tier two or tier three. So um, this uh, graph based reinforcement learning approach we propose can be used for IUDU association uh, problem in the ORAN or other similar problem. Um, because the key point here is one, the node attributes are with high dimension. Uh, for example, they can be high dimensional vectors. Uh, in this case, uh, if we want to optimize uh, mul multiple, if we want to optimize multi goals, multiple goals simultaneously, the heuristic method will really struggle. Um, so for this uh, specific ex experiment, we want to minimize first the total latency of this problem. And we also want to minimize the total bandwidth cost. Um, the third thing we want to minimize is the power consumption at the tier two and tier three nodes. The goal here is to find the optimal association between the three types of nodes uh, while we minimize all of these to make sure that we found the uh, uh, to make sure that we can find the best solution considering all these um, different attributes. Um, I will show uh, the training of these deep reinforcement learning agent. Um, here, because uh, again, the training of uh, deep reinforcement learning is to maximize the, the accumulative reward. We can see that in this training graph, um, the reward is increasing and it is stabilized after around two, three hundred of training episodes, which means our um, deep reinforcement learning agent has found a good solution and it converges to the uh, the uh, global maximum. Um, then I will show you um, the uh, experiment using the content delivery network data. So here is a visualization of the nodes we have in the Bristol area. So uh, we have so we have here. Uh, this is a here. This is a uh, tier one node. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, here this is a tier three node, and then we have a tier two node, and then we have uh, 26 tier one nodes distributed in different locations around Bristol. And this is another visualization. We can see that the uh, requirements, or we say the attributes, uh, the attributes in each node are different. These numbers indicating uh, the potential uh, user equipment we will have associated with each node. So, uh, so for for the nodes we have here, we pro, uh, we present uh, the graph. Uh, we present the solution using the graph deep reinforcement learning, learning approach. Um, we can see that uh, first this agent finds a solution uh, by associating all the tier three, uh, all the tier one node. Uh, uh, by associating all the tier one node to the tier two and tier three nodes. 
and here is the average latency uh, in two uh, different tier two and tier three nodes. And for the power consumption, we can see uh, that in the core node, we use almost 100% uh, uh, of its power. And for the second, uh, for the second node, it used around 90% of power. And for the resource utilization, we use almost 100% of resources in this core node, and we use uh, less than 70% of resources in this uh, tier two node. We compare it with uh, first a very simple baseline, a random agent, uh, which will just random associate, uh, find random association between nodes. We can see that for this random agent, uh, first the latency is higher than the uh, graph approach we proposed. And the more importantly, for the power and resource utilization, um, for the power consumption, it use uh, basically the same amount of power at the uh, first node, but for the second node, it also use uh, 98% of power, which means uh, this solution uh, consumes more power than the optimized uh, graph based solution. And for the resource utilization, uh, it uses like uh, 79, uh, nine, it uses like 97% of resources uh, for the first node, and it also uses more than 85% of resources. So for this random agent, uh, so for this random solution, it has higher latency and it consumes more power and use more resources. So it's it's less uh, efficient. Um, we compared with a second baseline, which is a heuristic agent. So uh, for this uh, heuristic ag agent, we can see that the average latency is higher. So uh, in both nodes, the latency is higher than the approach we uh, proposed. Uh, for the power consumption, it's similar. So for one node, it used almost 100% of power. For the second node, it used 90% of power. And for the resources, for the first node, it used almost 100%. And for the uh, second one, it used around 70%. But here, the latency is higher, which means uh, for the heuristic agent, it can find a solution, uh, use uh, less power than the random agent, and use less resources than the, uh, than the random agent, but it cannot optimize um, both the power consumption, resource utilization, and latency at the same time, uh, which means for this kind of problem, when we have um, high dimensional node attributes and we have multiple goals to optimize, we have multiple constraints, um, the uh, graph deep reinforcement learning solution is a very promising way. So um, that's all about our demo. So um, if you have any questions or if you see potential applications of the, pro of the approaches or the solutions we propose, please feel free to contact us. Thank you.